Do you ever wonder why some people can get so much out of their footage and they have the same exact camera as you? You purchase this camera with the idea that you're gonna make the same footage as on the official release video and you can't get the damn thing to give you good looking images. This is gonna be the first of two quick guides on how to expose being the first one and then edit on the second one. C log three. Of course, you can apply a lot of these concepts to different types of logs from different cameras as well. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, my name is Joe and this is Cameras and Tech. As the name suggests, I make camera gear view videos and tech review videos. So if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Was that I thing? Was that I thing awkward? I don't really care, whatever. Anyways, if you're just starting out using log like I was a few years ago, then you may be kind of lost with how to expose this footage. This is specifically geared towards C-Log3. You can apply a lot of the concepts to Sony's S-Log as well as Fuji's F-Log, just as long as you find the little differences such as native ISO, as well as the clipping points that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit. And also a disclaimer, I don't claim to be the best at any of this stuff. Let's start with this. I'm a creative genius. These are just the shortcuts that I found over the years. Uh, the least complicated way that works for me to try and get vibrant, really detailed looking images. We're going to start with an overview of C-Log3. C-Log3 is a log file that Canon created that sits in kind of the prosumer and consumer space. It sits in between regular C-Log, which is a very beginner level log, and then C-Log2, which is super, super flat. The footage actually holds up really well because I'm shooting right now on a Canon C70 as well as a Canon R6. So if you can't really tell which camera is which or the footage looks really close, it's because they're both shooting in C-Log3. C-Log3 is often called the Goldie Log because it's kind of that perfect combination of easy editability as well as a really good set of attributes such as dynamic range and it plays super well with the Canon provided LUT. I can attest to C-Log2 looking a little bit kind of red tingy with the uh, skin tones when you add the Canon provided LUT. It has so much color information in it that I think the LUT kind of struggles to keep everything natural. But C-Log3, however, when you put that LUT on, it's almost good to go. But we'll go over that in the editing portion of C-Log3 in the next quick guide. For this one, we're gonna be going over how I expose C-Log3 and all of my shortcuts. This is the part you've been waiting for, the quick and dirty version of exposing your footage correctly. And before we start out um, and we start talking about overexposing and underexposing things, sometimes that's a choice. If you're in a really dark scenario, underexposing just makes a lot of sense. You want the noise to be in there. It's really kind of an artistic thing. So think of it more as this is going to help you control your image a little better. I'm just going to show you how to get the most detailed skin tones as well as not clipping your highlights. But if you decide that you want to clip the highlights, then go ahead and clip the damn highlights. We're going to break this up into three main portions. Highlights first, skin tones, and then ISO. The first thing I do in my menu system with Canon in order to make sure that I get my highlights just right, either wanting them to be at the edge of being blown out or having them completely exposed, I wanna make sure that I go into my menu and look at the zebra settings. And I usually use zebra setting number one to show me where the highlights are. And if you haven't used zebras before, it's an on-screen guide to show you what parts of the image are exposed to the level that you designate on the menu. On C-Log3, I designate the IRE or percentage value to be between 80 and 85 IRE. And I'm purposely not gonna go over the definition of IRE. Just know that these are the values where on C-Log3, you're gonna start to lose all of the information because the lights or whatever you're exposing your footage at is becoming too bright and you're going to clip. When you're looking at it in your footage, especially with log file, it doesn't look like it's going to clip, but when you break it down to regular colors, 
Rec 709 is typically what people use. It will be clipped about 85. If you wanna be super safe, set it at 80, so you don't even come close. But 85 is really where I set my zebra settings. If you're using something like F-Log or Sony S-Log 2, I think S-Log 2's clipping point with the IRE is 90. I'll put the resources somewhere up here on the sides just so that you guys know. The values are interchangeable just as long as you have a camera that has zebras um, and has log files. It really is just the value. So once you find that, just enter it into your camera and you can find out where your highlights clip. The IRE value for skin tones is between 50 and 60. So I set it right in the middle at 55 IRE. And I won't go into this whole full explanation of IRE and grayscale and why the skin tone looks so good at that level. But at that level, the skin tone is vibrant, very saturated, colorful, and has a lot of detail. And most times when it comes to footage that's like this, talking head, or if there's a subject, you want your subject to be the center of attention. And there's no better way to do that than expose their skin absolutely perfect. Finding the native ISO of your sensor and the log footage is absolutely key in order to get the most out of your sensor and get that high level of dynamic range. The native ISO is that level where you get the least amount of noise and the highest amount of dynamic range. If you drop your ISO below the native, you will start to lose dynamic range with each stop that you go down. And if you increase it, you'll just increase the noise. So it sits right there in the middle and it gives you the most out of your sensor. Now I say that it's not set in stone because it's not always possible, especially in run and gun type situations where you can't really control the lighting and you don't have time to set your settings. Sometimes you have to deal with having lower dynamic range in order to get the shot done correctly in the very moment. So it's not set in stone. The image can still look pretty good. But if you have the ability to control everything and you have the time, setting your native ISO to 800 for C-Log3, it's gonna make your image look excellent. It's gonna make the image look the best that it could possibly be. Just like the monitoring for this video, hitting an IRE of 55 for skin tones and then 85 for highlights is gonna give you the best looking image possible in a controlled environment. Controlling all of those elements like they do on movie sets, to perfection will make your image look so much better. And if you just spend a little bit of time indoors, messing around with lights and environment, going outside using reflectors and stuff like that, just to see where the zebras land on your camera, you're going to upgrade your ability to create a good image by light years. Trust me, when I say my picture looked like absolute crap for the longest time because I shouldn't have been shooting in logs so early on in my career, but I got a little hyped up with watching a lot of these tech gear review videos. And so I thought that using log would give me the best image possible, but it turns out log is much more sensitive to technical factors and light factors than standard images. So. I underexposed a whole lot of my images and I really thought it was the camera that wasn't giving me the right footage. Um, and I watched other people's videos and I was like, oh my God, how did they do that with the same exact camera? If you're gonna use log, then at least understand these concepts, use your zebras wisely. And being able to do that helps you create a great looking image. I wish that I had known this earlier on. Stay tuned for part two, which is gonna be the editing portion. I'm gonna show you how I quick edit my C-Log3 footage to get it to look neutral. And then when I start to apply kind of a creative look afterwards, it's a quick like couple of minutes and then your footage is looking really, really good. So stay tuned for that. And if you like videos like this, or again, if you have a serious gear or tech review addiction, like I do. It burns the back of my throat, even though it, it hurts me. It makes me feel good. Show you boys some love and stay tuned for some more. Thanks guys.